Welcome to Bitch Call Your Sponsor. My name's Misty. Hi, Misty. I'm Sam. Hello, Sam. Let's do our primary purpose. Sure. Our primary, our primary purpose, purpose is, is for Misty, Misty and, Sam and Sam to grow, to their, grow friendship their friendship and, and maybe, and help, maybe others. help others. Okay. I have brought for us today re- the role of creativity and recovery. Mm. And I wanted to discuss some of the ways that engaging in writing, painting, music, or any other like parts of ourselves can help aid in the recovery process. Mm. That the emotional outlet can help with the sense of healing and One of the thoughts that came to mind is An Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and how I did that in my first three years in sobriety with uh, three other people and we would meet on Sunday mornings and one of the guys that met with us was a lawyer and another guy, I can't remember, I think he was like business finance. And then the other girl, she was a singer. And then there was me and I was like a waitress, barely hanging on by a thread with sober and everything else. Mm-hmm. And the guy who was the lawyer ended up quitting his job and moving to New York City to become a trainer. Whoa. Uh, yeah. After doing this thing. And he stayed, I mean, I don't know if he stayed sober. I don't know what happened to him. But it was so cool to like watch somebody go through that process and completely upend their life. Um, so, yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on that. <sighs> wow. I You are just breaking it, Misty. Oh, my God. So, I have yet to complete this uh cycle artist way i've i think i've started many times and have yet to complete um it is specifically the artist way i know the topic is creativity and in, in you know the healing uh the thing with artist way though it is it, there are some major and wonderful exercises in there um you know the morning pages i could never keep up with i was you know the perfectionist in me got really got the better of them um but the artist date is something that i i still continue many many years later you know in really tapping in and seeing you know uh what what really is going to bring me joy on on that on that plane you know and exploring the arts um uh as far as like um the healing journey um Gosh, you know, uh, when I uh, first got introduced uh, to the ACA side of things and they were doing alternate hand writing, the writing has been very tricky for me um, because I'm realizing I'm so in my brain. um, And there was also a coach that uh, a business coach that I'd encountered who in their book, they they also encourage alternate um writing um you know i i think creativity definitely has had a place in my recovery journey it's been uh little um peaks and valleys throughout um the one thing that i think that has been um the most beneficial is stuff that's like body stuff so um like painting not so much um it, but it was more movement type things um, have actually been uh, really uh, helpful for me being so in my brain to really get in my body. And um, there was a woman, I think she might have passed actually, G- G- Gabriel, Gabrielle Roth. She used to do the five rhythms. It's like this ecstatic dance. Mm-hmm. And I remember going with a friend of mine um, 
in early recovery. And it was so, I mean, there everything came up, you know, in that room. It's just, you're just supposed to move your body however your body wants to move, you know? And of course it was like me looking around, like who's watching me and oh, why are they doing it that way? And, I, I, am I doing this wrong? You know, and all, a lot of that stuff until, you know, the third time I went and I was just like, just got into it. And it was like, it didn't even matter to me what was there. Cause I was like embodied, you know? Mm -hmm. um yeah so that's kind of been my experience as far as like the creative outlet well i really like that last part that you talked about how you said that getting into your body and then just letting go of what the other people thought and that is what is coming up for me with this is that when I was dancing in my living room, practicing a lot of the ACA and our child stuff and listening to my favorite playlist and then realizing, oh, wait, this is what I did as a little girl. Mm. This is what I did at eight and 10 and 11 when, you know, Nikki would leave me alone for hours on end and I was the only child and there was no brother and there was no dad. And I was like, how to it was almost like a way that I regulated my nervous system without knowing it mm. was I would just put on music and just dance around the living room and you know as I was doing that as an adult I was like right back in that living room and dancing around as a child and could feel the healing and I do like to paint and I, I do think that that's also like a movement thing as well. And mm. sometimes I'll be sitting there painting, like, how do I know to put that there? Like I can really tell that I'm in flow or in touch with a higher spirit because I'll just be like, Oh, this needs to go there. And I'm like, well, how did I know that? Mm. Um, and it's so cool to watch that process. Um, but yeah, I think it's about getting to the, remembering that place of who I am without approval from anyone else in the world. Mm, that's so beautiful. I, um, the painting and the writing, like, you know, my first fourth step, I didn't even write out. My sponsor at the time, let me put it into an Excel grid, which we all know I love a great grid. <laughs> Um, which was, was sufficient for the time to just get out the boulders to really deal with the stuff that was there. And then subsequently, I've I've written it out. And I've come to learn to love writing, actually, more recently, uh -huh. really very recently. This is, you know, after a very long time resisting. And like, there definitely is a connection, right, the, from the heart to the through the arm and through the, you know, to the hand. And so whatever that's the extension of the paintbrush, the pen. Um, and I, I firmly believe that um, creativity is um, the channel to creation and higher power. Um, yeah. So if, yeah. Yeah. It's that, int it's like that, it's like that knowing, right. Where you're like, how did, how do I know that that goes there? And it's just like, you're, it sounds like for me, that's like flow and connect connectedness, you know? Well, you, you know, I've been on my kick with my NDEs, right? And yes, I saw a TikTok. I know everyone's shocked. I was on TikTok um, with even Alexander that did the, oh. you know, but he was the neurosurgeon that had the NDE and he never believed in that kind of thing before, but after his experience, but he talks about being in the Merck and he's one of the few people that describes having the NDE and being in this murky, like dark gelatin place before he has his experience. Mm -hmm. And he talks about also being dropped back into it many times. This is what I noticed in this TikTok that I never noticed before when I listened to his stuff, that during his like magical experience, he gets dropped back into that murk time and time again. And what he has to do is think of the notes that he was listening to and the music to get himself back in that higher place. 
Mm. And I just thought that is so similar to this human experience where I get the density of the ego and believing like what is happening in front of me and that they have my power and that this is all so real and that I'm not going to make it or that that, you know, just that density and that doing tapping into this recovery uh, artistic part is the part that gets me out of that mark and out of that mire. So like last night, it was Saturday night. I did get offered plans, but I turned them down and grabbed some paints and some watercolors and a canvas and a uh, salt burn. And mm. I painted and then I was like, I really want a cheeseburger. And I'm like, I can't go out by myself and mm. sit in a place and have a cheeseburger because I like to eat them hot and I don't want to drive all the way back home. And I was like, yes, you can. Mm. You can go out on a Saturday night where other people are. You can put a podcast in. You can eat a cheeseburger. You can enjoy it. You can come back. I actually stopped and got a pint of haagen I did not eat the whole thing. Thank you very much. I did buy a lottery mm. ticket. And it was a beautiful, wonderful Saturday night. Uh, I love that so much. I, I, uh, I love that so much. I, um, and I love how you also mentioned dance parties in the other, in the beginning, you know, like, yeah, I think it's like anything, um, where I can get more connected. Um, and like, I guess it's this thing of like, I love going to the movies alone. No one could see me. The eating alone thing is a rare thing for me did and so you were just in your zone you had your burger and had a delightful time with yourself well yes and <laughs> <laughs> it was it was uncomfortable you know mm, i mm. i'm not going to say it wasn't uncomfortable mm. It was uncomfortable and I did it anyways and at a certain point in the process i came to forget about which eyes are staring at me or the couple in the other booth thinking, what is she doing by herself? Or, you know, at a certain point, I realized everyone's thinking about themselves. No one's mm. thinking about me. <laughs> I'm oh. an extra in their movie. Everyone thinks they're the hero. Yep. I can just enjoy my thing and not be considerate of any eyes on me while I do it and put that added pressure and just be in my own experience. Mm. Mm, that's so beautiful. I am just recalling that I actually had a dinner by myself once uh, nice. within the last three years, uh, what, right when after I moved and I was craving a steak frites. And so I went uh. to this like place and I remember they put me in this weird booth that where then I was facing a row of tables um, so I was looking at people's profiles um, and the table, the next table wasn't that far from me. So I was basically like watching <laughs> <laughs> a couple have a conversation. So I was like, wow, this is like watching a movie. I couldn't hear it. <laughs> Excuse me. It was one of those like, you know boisterous like very like loud french brasserie type places so the sound level was there was a lot of um ambient noise that i couldn't I, but i was reading i was trying to read their lips and they were in some sort of a fight because you know by oh. language i could tell and they both what was so amazing is they both paused and they it's like almost someone set their timer and they just looked at each other in the eyes, no chewing, no eating. It's like they stopped mid conversation and literally it felt like it was three minutes, which is a very long time to just be staring at somebody and not. So I was sitting there eating my steak free, smiling my own business, just watching like, wow, they're just maintaining eye contact right now. <laughs> I almost wow. was like, oh, what their therapist is? Like, I bet that they just like something happened and it's like they just went into whatever practice they were doing. It was quite, it's quite beautiful. Were um, they French? Did you say they were French? 
they were not French, but it was a oh, French okay. pizzeria. Okay. I, fe- okay. I felt like they were like the quintessential New York. Got you. Um, Got you know, you. she had her pearls and her, you know, her twin set and, you know, um, he had his little, you know, Burberry raincoat and, you know, that whole kind of vibe. Um, but what I will say that's actually just coming to me right now is there is something about anonymity and or mo- like, I guess it's anonymity slash mood where like when I was thinking when I was doing the static dance, when it was bright, bright and it was the room, it was like not a vibe and it was like stark. You could see everything. I was hyper conscious, you know, and it was you know, in the brasserie, when I was having dinner, it was like moody and dark. And, you know, and it's like, there's a safety to uh, that for me. You know, the movie theater, it's totally dark. Like you can't even see anything and you're not there to look around, you know, except the screen for the most part, like the big screen, not the one in your hands. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess I don't know. I guess it's like for me, it's like there's some level of self-consciousness, the, the brighter the room is where it's like to be seen. But I also think for me, there's this thing about mood and vibe, you know, Mm -hmm. like if that brasserie was like, had the house lights on, like, I'd be like, no, this is not where I actually want to enjoy a dinner, you know? Um, But like the twinkle of the lights and you know, the like the dimmers and like all of that whole vibe, you know, the red plush bag cats and like, that's like a vibe, you know, and I guess it's like leads. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I just thought of that, like the brightness versus like this, like cozy home kind of um, vibe, you know. Sponsor. Call, call you sponsor. Sponsor. Call you sponsor. Call you sponsor. Call your sponsor. Call your sponsor. Send us an email with comments, questions, or concerns. BCY sponsor at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate five stars.